This week on Game Pro News, we are, rather appropriately, all about the iPhone, with two new releases, one new announcement, and one classic title pulled from the App Store. The extended cut of House of the Dead Overkill is considered too scary for Aussies. Sony removes major features of the new PSP. Little King's Story gets a sequel, and it's not on the Wii. PES 2012 tests the waters with two demo releases, and Adrift tells the story of a future where memories are traded like chips. Hi, I'm Jessica Citizen. In a week where Steve Jobs has resigned as CEO of Apple, it was an amusing coincidence that we saw a whole bunch of games news centering around the iPad, iPhone and iPod Touch. Firstly, Australian developer Firemint released its first game since being acquired by Electronic Arts earlier this year, the eagerly anticipated Spy Mouse. Agent Squeak considers himself to be a bit of a super spy, and using a line-drawing gameplay style similar to Firemint's earlier hit Flight Control, he's running around through 72 levels of gadgets and power-ups, avoiding fiendish felines at every turn. The game itself has actually been all but finished for months now, with the perfectionist developers making sure the little rodent has just the right amount of polish. It's available in the App Store for 99 cents. Also available in the App Store is Quarrel from Scottish developer Denki. This one is long overdue. We first heard about it back at GDC 2009, when the company was preparing to launch the game on Xbox Live Arcade. A few years later, a new publisher and some major upheavals at the studio have seen the game finally pop up on an all-new platform, and this one is well worth checking out. Create high-scoring words from an eight-letter anagram, and Quarrel has all 114,000 words of the Collins' official Scrabble dictionary plugged into it. If he's going to start making things up, it's going to know. Best described as a sort of blend of Scrabble, Jumble and Risk, the asking price is a little on the expensive side for a casual game you might never have heard of, but there is a free version available if you want to try it out first. Now, if you're a retro games fan, rejoice. Electronic Arts has revealed that Bullfrog's classic sim theme park will be released onto iOS devices by the end of the year, and it'll be free to play. That is, free to play if you're happy to wait for the game's real-time economy. If you're not, real money can be used to speed up transactions and construction, meaning that if you're not careful, your park will soon siphon all of the cash out of your wallet. But along with all of the good news, there is a less than wonderful update for citizens of Switzerland and Austria this week, with the local app stores deciding that the iOS version of Wolfenstein 3D contains offensive imagery. Old school FPS fans shouldn't be too surprised by this move. The game, known as Wolfenstein Classic, sees adventurers storming a Nazi stronghold, which is appropriately decked out with swastikas and other decorations. Of course, the final boss battle is with Hitler himself. It's hardly the first time the older than old school shooter has been in the spotlight either. The 1994 Super Nintendo port had to be modified both to remove the troublesome swastikas and also to change savage guard dogs into rabid sewer rats. John Carmack from id Software summed up the company's opinion of the decision, posting a sad face to his Twitter account when he broke the news. Perhaps Carmack could sit down with the folks from Sega Australia who have just been informed that the extended cut of House of the Dead Overkill has been refused classification down under. That means the game is effectively banned from sale or display. According to the local classification board, the game contains very frequent, unrelenting and detailed violence accompanied by copious blood and gore detail inflicted on zombies and mutant beings. In particular, the board also took objection to the baby mutant which jumps onto the screen before exploding into bloody chucks. Darren Macbeth, the managing director at Sega Australia, believes this recent decision is indicative of the inconsistencies that are plaguing the video game classification system in Australia. The original House of the Dead Overkill was released unscathed for the Wii back in 2008, earning itself an MA15 Plus rating for strong horror violence. It looks like the changes Headstrong have made to the game for its PS3 relaunch have just nudged it over the edge. According to a statement, Sega Australia is determined to appeal the decision, hoping to have the classification overturned without making any cuts to the game. The House of the Dead Overkill extended cut is still on track for release around the rest of the world, just in time for Halloween. In other news, while everybody is focusing on the new Sony handheld, the PlayStation Vita, the hardware giant is spending a little time and a little love on its old handheld, the humble PSP. 
It's about to get a whole lot humbler too with the announcement of system specs for the PSP E1000 first announced at Gamescom. It's been described as a pared back version designed without too many bells and whistles in order to achieve a lower selling point. The first thing to go, which we knew about already, was Wi-Fi capabilities, which will seriously reduce the console's multiplayer abilities. Next on the chopping block, more surprisingly, was stereo sound. If you plug in a set of headphones or bring your own speakers, you'll get full stereo audio from both sides. Relying on the onboard technology though, you're reduced to a single built-in speaker, which will, again, potentially impact significantly on your game playing. While we can understand cost-cutting measures and wanting to drop the price, the PSP E1000 will sell for just 99 bucks in the States, are gamers really happy to sacrifice quality and experience just to save a few bucks? Speaking of the Vita though, however briefly, a former Wii exclusive title is lining up for a sequel on Sony's upcoming touch-sensitive device. Little King's Story is a ridiculously underrated RPG release that came out in 2009. Now, Konami is working on a sequel, the creatively titled New Little King's Story. King Korobo is back, as well as Princess Apricot and, assumedly, the carefree adults of the original, along with a new art style including slightly more realistically proportioned characters. The game will be on show at Tokyo Game Show next month. Gearing up for a launch next month, however, is Pro Evolution Soccer 2012, which is taking an interesting approach to demo releases. Rather than waiting until closer to launch time and releasing a sample of the polished final product, Konami have given gamers an early insight into the game's development, releasing the first demo based on a preview build. It's been designed to give gamers an early look at what's in store, checking out the new teammate control elements and much beloved active AI features. This early demo will be followed up by a second one in mid-September, which promises to better reflect the final version's feel and gameplay, but if you need a soccer fix right now, head to the GamePron file library and get it while it's hot. And finally, we all know what George Orwell had predicted for 1984. Thankfully, that didn't all come true. Now, French developer Don't Nod has looked further into the future, creating Adrift, their interpretation of how the world will look in 2084. Human memories are used as bargaining chips in Neo Paris, where they can be bought, sold or traded, and if the real ones aren't good enough, digitise some new ones for a fee. Inevitably, the memory-based economy, which the developers explain is a simple extension of the social networking and geolocation we know today, leads to a very small number of people receiving a very large amount of power. Sounds like a perfect setting for a video game, right? We haven't seen any real gameplay footage just yet, but if it's anything like the concept art being splashed around the place, we're in for a bit of a treat. Till next week, I'm Jessica Citizen and this is GamePro News.